The carpool problem isn't necessarily a discussion about Q learning. Rather, it's a discussion on how deep learning can lend a helping hand. In this case, the reinforcement learning algorithm is tasked with keeping a pole on top of the cart upright for as long as it can manage. This seems like a relatively straightforward problem, except for the fact that the boundaries of the variables are extremely large. You can see on the OpenAI website that there are some infinities on that boundary table. This makes for any traditional parameterization techniques like tiling obsolete. We saw in a previous video how tiling can solve the mountain car problem. Using Q-learning in this case was very helpful because the boundaries were finite and within a certain order of magnitude. For the carpool problem, the infinities make tiling obsolete. There are some environmental things to consider as well when tackling this problem. For example, the episode would terminate if the cart leaves the screen, or if the pole rotates more than 12 degrees off center. Before we get into the details on how this algorithm works, we should briefly explain the reinforcement learning pipeline. First, we need to introduce the agent. The agent is the algorithm. This could be Q-learning or deep Q-learning, for example. And to start the reinforcement learning process, the agent needs to interact with the environment. This happens by taking an action. This action is then transferred to the environment, which results in the cart moving back and forth to keep the pole upright. Then the environment gives the agent a reward for the action and a new state. The agent will receive a positive reward until the pole falls about 12 degrees. Then the agent will receive a reward of zero. The overall pattern is the state corresponds to an action that is chosen by the agent. Then the environment gives the agent a reward for said action and produces the next state, and so on. When I first started building this neural network, I noticed that I couldn't look at the data the same way I could with the mountain car problem. The mountain car problem kind of just went on for infinity until I, I, I actually met the target of the flag. With the cart pole problem, it's very different because the pole just falls over unless the agent kind of picks it up along the way. So really, I have about five or six time steps to build a functioning algorithm until the, until the actual episode terminates. And so the remedy to this was to kind of just build a good network and kind of get lucky. I think this next example really highlights what I mean by get lucky. You can see that we're on episode zero and the algorithm is doing a very, very good job at balancing the pole, which is very, very strange because it kind of just caught a groove somewhere in the middle of this episode and it carried forward like that for the rest of the episodes. So I'll show episode one and two right after this just to demonstrate. And you can see how the behavior is very, very quickly learned but this doesn't happen every single time. And these attributes become very, very difficult to learn along the way, which kind of makes this problem kind of dubious. Just to kind of demonstrate what I mean, this is a run where the agent just never learned. And it tries episode after episode after episode, and it never really gets anywhere. It kind of just fails immediately. And I'm not exactly sure why this happens. It's the exact same neural network the exact same parameters, and for some reason, this network doesn't learn anything. I'm not sure if it's because of the stochastic nature of the problem, but this problem is considered solved if you get past about 200 steps. And as you saw in the episode zero clip, we definitely got past about 200 steps. So I think I might consider this problem solved on my end and move on to a different problem. Uh, Overall, I think this problem is very interesting. It gave me a good introduction to using neural networks in Q learning and how to integrate deep learning in with reinforcement learning. And so I thought this was a good example problem, a good bridge problem, if you will, to more difficult problems down the line. If you enjoy this content, uh, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.